Hello everyone, welcome to another art video in Paint.net. I realized that I said on Twitter, I don't know exactly how many people even saw that, but I did say on Twitter that I would be resuming my Let's Plays on Sunday. That's the day, at least it is as I'm saying this. But I realized I can't actually start the Let's Play until I have thumbnail art for it. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to make the thumbnail art and record myself doing it. Uh, I'm also trying to make the Ape Escapes highlights video because I forgot to do that. I forgot to write down all of the highlights as I was playing the game. So now I have to watch the whole Let's Play series again in order to find all the good parts and then make a highlights video, which I'll probably end up doing tomorrow because I'm not even halfway through them. I started watching them last night. It's, it's gonna be a while, but uh, yeah, so um, today I am drawing Maria, the main female protagonist of Final Fantasy II. She's not the main main protagonist, but you know the theme. I, I did say before that I wanted the thumbnail characters to be my favorite female character from each game, but with Final Fantasy II it's difficult. Final Fantasy II has four main female characters. Maria, Layla, Princess Hilda, and the Lamia Queen. Now as far as which one is my favorite, I'd say it's probably a tie between Layla and the Lamia Queen, but neither of them are very important. They show up and then they leave. It's kind of sad. So I figure instead of drawing either of them, I'm, I'm just going to draw the main character. The main character of the game. I figure I might as well change things up a bit. So yeah, so I ended up choosing Maria. I, I understand it's not the greatest explanation for why I chose Maria, but uh, there's other internal reasons would take me far longer to explain than you're willing to listen to. So it's Maria. I mean, eventually I might play Final Fantasy 2 again like one of the remakes. And then I'll use a different character. Maybe Layla, maybe Nalamia Queen, one of the two. Who knows, there's always time to incorporate other characters into the thumbnails. But for today, it's going to be Maria. So, I've highlighted the section that I'm going to be working with. Here's my scan. Like usual, I don't have a tablet and I don't really have the proper camera for recording myself drawing it by hand so I can't show you the actual drawing process which is unfortunate so you just had to deal with everything that comes after that so control shift X crop the selection crop to the selection that is I don't think I ever explained what control B does if you ever zoomed in or out control B uh, zooms the image to fit the window and then hitting control B will take you back to your previous zoom settings. I've been using it a lot ever since I learned what the shortcut key did. So yeah, now that we've cropped it to the selection, go into brightness and contrast, minimize the brightness and maximize the contrast to make the whole image one bit. So it's all pure black and white. Now, in my previous art video when I was doing Natalie, I showed you that the way to clean up the line art real fast and get rid of all of this excess dust out in the void was to color the lines red and then select the red and then all the black ones one at a time, but I found a much easier way. I can't believe I didn't realize it before, but much much easier way to do it is to simply color all of the lines that you want to keep red. Then when you're done you can just use the magic wand tool to select all of the red and delete everything else. Then you can just color all of the red black at once. It's much faster. So give me a minute while I do that. like all the lines that I'll be keeping. Then get the magic wand tool out. 
hold in shift and click to select all the red, and control I to invert the selection, and then hit delete. Now everything except the lines we want to keep are gone. So then you switch back to black and white colors. Let me move my windows back in here. Black and white colors. Switch to the fill bucket tool. Hold in shift. Left click on the red, turn it all black. And then right click on the transparency to turn it all white. Then hit control D or enter to finish. And voila, it's all clean. But we still have to go through and clean up the line art itself. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to zoom in to about 200%. Let me turn my ruler on. And I'll also turn my layers off. Let me switch my colors. X. Switch to the brush tool. Make it. Let's make it size 10. 30 was too large last time. Turn off my windows. Zoom into about here. 200% should be fine. So that we're between 0 and 600 pixels. Then you just scroll up and down looking for sections to fix. Any lines crossing over and other lines. Stuff like that. Any particularly jagged lines. Let's clean them up a bit. I scanned this one at a much lower DPI than before because it was lagging too bad last time. Every single action I did caused my computer to lag, so this image is the scan that I made is half as big as the one that I made for Natalie. It means that we sacrifice a teeny bit of quality, but most people tend not to notice when it comes to the finished product. Okay, that wasn't so hard. The line art came out pretty amazing on its own this time. Okay, so next I'm going to fill in the eyelashes with black. But not all of them. I'm going to leave the ones that her hair is covering empty. That's confusing. <laughs> the way this particular lock of hair works. It's almost like an optical illusion. Let's clean up any lines that you missed while while you're doing all this along the way. Make sure that shapes that are supposed to be round look round and not jagged. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna save that. And next we're going to bring in some of the reference images that I used. This is Maria's original concept art, illustrated by Yoshitaka Amano. This is the main reference that I used for drawing her outfit. This is the reference I used for drawing her hair. This is her PSP face sprite. And her hair and her eyes. Her face in general, really. And this I just used for minor extra details, like to see if my interpretation of the Yamano art was, you know, matched other people's interpretations. This is her picked logic art. And if you've heard of World of Final Fantasy, which came out in the PS4 recently, all the characters in that game reuse their designs from Pictologica. These chibi types with the weird, bored-looking eyes. I don't really get that. But yeah, we're going to start with the face sprite, because that has the easiest to copy colors. 
gonna copy her skin color, get that taken care of first. With how small this image is, it's much easier to fill in everything in. I think she has painted nails. There's no way to tell. So I'm going to assume that she does not. Okay, I think that's everything. If I missed any spots later, I'll spot them. Alright, next we're gonna do her hair. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of different colors spaced around here. So what I like to do is I like to make my color picker selection larger like this. Then I can pick from a whole group of colors and it will give me the average. So that's pretty cool. It will blend all the colors I've selected together into one. That looks pretty cool. Although it doesn't seem like her hair color. I mean, going off of the colors of the Amano artwork is never a, the greatest idea. Because they're all very... washed out. I think he predominantly uses watercolors. And this hair color seems to be based on the Amano art. But in-game... In the game itself, she does have darker purple as a hair color, so let's see if I can adjust this a bit. Maybe give it some more saturation. That's a bit closer to what I wanted. Maybe a bit darker. Yeah, 40-40 should work. Yeah, that looks like Maria's hair color. some of her skin. Let me take care of that now. Copy her skin color. Reduce its value by like 80 or so. And then color that. Because it is slightly darker. It's away from the light. And it will help me shade it later. Because rather than give this thing full shading, I'm just going to make it the same color as the darkest shaded part of her skin. Hold on. Sorry, I have absolutely no control over when my dogs bark. There's nothing I can do about that. So anyway, back to her hair. Go to her hair, cut the value in half and make it darker. And this will be the color I use for a few different things. First, her eyebrows, which typically appear darker than your natural hair color. Unless it's particularly long. Like, if you have a beard, and it's really long, then it will look, just look the same color as your hair. But short hair tends to look darker than long hair. Don't really know why. Anyway, next we're gonna come up here. Use the magic wand tool to select the, this area here of the skin. Then we're gonna get the line tool. Make it thinner, maybe two pixels wide. And draw a line from here to here. Enter. Fill bucket. And then fill in all these little sections. Fill in these little white dots. Those will get filled in black later when we're done coloring. Let's see. Yeah, we also want to apply this darker hair color to this hair that's kind of in the back and is like a further back layer. Hair that's behind the hair that's in front. I don't, I don't really know what the words I'm looking for are. I don't know if you can hear her blabbing, but my dad just got home. That's not hair. My dad just got home, and my mom is just telling him all about her day. 
You know the deal. Let me fix this line. We're going to do her lips. Let me shrink the size of my color picker. Come on. There we go. Uh, next, her eyes. Her eyes. It's hard to see her eyes, but looking at them, it seems like they were intended to be gradients of some sort. Like, they don't have much shine to them, and they don't have a distinguishable pupil, so that's why I drew them like this. So, I'm going to pick one of the lighter colors to use as the main color. And then one of the darker colors. Oh, I guess this is a straight dark gray, huh? Practically black. And that will go there. Now give me a minute while I get my off-white. 95% and fill in the eyes and the shines. So they don't get filled in black later when we do that step. Okay, what next? Her hair, skin, eyes, and lips are all done. Uh, let's go ahead and get this bow out of the way. I think it's got a few different colors that'll make it kind of difficult to deal with. Hmm. Let's draw from the Amano art. Make the selection bigger. That should be fine. It seems to me like it should be more of a red orange. This looks straight orange, but it's not orange. It's almost completely in the red. Hmm. Let me increase the saturation. That's too saturated. Looks almost glowing. Hmm. Maybe reduce the value? That's a little better. Okay. Tell if these things were supposed to be feathers or not. They're kind of indistinguishable, and the artist for Pictologica didn't include them. So I just made a. Took, I just took an artistic liberty on it. another part of her hands. Let's go grab this color and throw it in there. There we go. Okay, the bow seems to be completely colored now. Now we'll do the arrow. Let's see, what color is the shaft of your arrows? Uh, they seem to vary. This one's brown and this one's like magenta. Hmm. And this one looks green. What the hell, Amano? Uh, I'll just stick with the brown one. That looks fine. Now, none of the tips are visible, so I'm just going to make up a tip color. I'm just going to say it's 
and a charcoal black. Maybe not that black. Maybe more like a flint. That's good. Okay, now we have to do her clothes. Okay. Once again, do I draw from this or the Amano art? Looks like it would be easier to draw from this. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay. And then for the gold, I'm going to draw from this because it's a bit more solid than it is here. We got a spot. Oh, no, not that. There's gold here too, right? Now that looks more like green. Yeah, that's green, all right. All right, what about this line here? What was I looking at when I drew that? It looks to be white in color, but this person seems to think it was pink. Maybe a blend of the two? No, I guess I kind of see some pink in there. Let's just pick from this one. It's literally the only line we needed that color for, but that's okay. Well, actually, she does have this thing on her arm. Uh, it's got a few different colors. Mostly pinks and purples because, you know, girls. Not saying that all girls wear purples and pinks, just, you know, in Japanese media, they tend to. See a group of people wearing different colors? The one wearing pink? It's a girl. Can't be any other way. Where did I just color pick from? Oh, right, that section. the straps. These darker purple straps. Still looks pink though, but that's not the exact same color as that, is it? No, I don't think it is. No, it's not. Okay. Alright, now for this belt thing down here. this? Looks like she has some kind of yellow thing where her belly button should be. It's not from this artwork. Huh. I didn't draw it. I won't bother with it. This looks like it's just going to be a really light gray. Just barely got a little bit of purple in it. And then the belt itself is a really dark, bluish purple looking thing. And then over here we got a couple of weird looking things. First is this light pink thing. Hmm. And then these. This looks like the same green used up here. 
maybe it's a bit different. It's hard to tell. Yeah, it's different. Doesn't matter though. And then all that's left is this strip of cloth here. I think. Yeah, it should be it. Once we do that. Okay, I'm pretty sure that strip of cloth is... Well, it's mostly white. It's like a very off-white. Shade of pink. Which didn't translate into my color pick at all. Let me go a bit further down. That's it. Just one. Let's just make that five. It clearly doesn't know what it's talking about. There we go. All colored. Now I get the magic wand tool out. I'm gonna go through and select all of the negative space. I think that's everything. Okay, then we hit delete. Switch to black. Get the film bucket tool out. Find one of those little white spots. Hold in shift and click. Then zoom out. Look around and make sure nothing that's not supposed to be black is black. Looks fine to me. Yep, so then hit enter or control D, either one. And the coloring stage is done. Okay, and then next, as I'm sure you're aware, is the shading stage. So make a new layer. We call it SH. Mode to multiply. I'm gonna transparent 75% gray. And then go to work. Although I want a larger brush than that. 30 will do. 30 might actually be too big. Let's make it 20. Now turn off these windows, give myself some more move, some room. Okay, uh, I have the light source coming from the right, because, as usual, the thumbnail character will be on the left, and that's where I put the shines. So, let's see.
Okay, I think we are done with the first layer of shading. So now we move on to the second. 50% transparent gray. Or transparent 50% gray, however you want to say it. Third layer. I don't know why I keep opening the layer window. Third layer done. And now we're on to the last layer of shading. Then we can move on. Okay. All the shading is done now. So now all we gotta do is get the selection tool. Hit Control A to select everything, and then hit Control Alt to cut out several sections of the negative space. This is just to make the next step load faster. I can cut through that string. It's not going to be shaded. It's part of the line art. Okay, that should be good. Alright, let me just zoom in. So I can see how various sections come out, namely her arms, because they're pretty big. Okay, blurs, Gaussian blur. Let's see how that looks at 50. Pretty good. Look how fast that goes. All because the image is smaller. Okay, now I want to fix this part here. It's jutting against the lighter part. I'm going to get the clone stamp tool. Hold in control, click in the dark area just to the left. Enable anti-aliasing and harden this all the way down just to make the brush softer. That makes it look a bit better, yeah. Okay, next we go to the background, hit the magic wand tool, hold and shift to select all the negative space, go back to the shading tool, shading layer, and hit delete. And there we go, the shading layer is complete. Next we work on the highlights layer. And set this one to overlay. And then get the translucent white and start working on that. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, don't forget to uh, disable anti-aliasing again.
Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we'll do the same thing we did before. Can you control it to select everything? Order an alt with the selection tool to cut out some blocks of negative space. Just to make it load faster. Ideally, I would have done the shading and the highlighting clean up this step in particular at the same time. Then I would only have to do all this selection stuff once. Okay, I want to be able to see her hair and her clothes because those are going to be the parts that stick out the most. spots on her abdomen kind of stick out. I'm going to hit OK for now. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to blur just this section some more. That's better. Now go back to the background layer. Hit hold and shift. Select the background and all the black lines. Go to the highlight layer and delete. There. Shading and highlighting are now done. Next we're going to do the textures. Starting with the hair. The texture layer the texture layer should always go underneath the shading and highlighting layers. Let me get out the translucent black. Get the brush tool, change its size to two. Actually, it could be one, I guess, since I'm working with a smaller image now. But I think it looks better when I use two. It comes out better, I think. Regardless of the image's size. Got all the hair lines drawn. So, let's select this whole area. Zoom in a bit so I can see it. Go to blurs, fragment blur, and mess with the settings until it looks right. Don't want distance to go too high. This looks good. Okay, then we go back to the background layer, get the magic wand tool, and select all the colors we use for her hair. Go back to the hair texture layer, hit Control I to invert, and then hit delete. And there we go, hair is done. 
Now, I don't think this outfit, this, the main part of her outfit has been a cloth. I think it's more like a leather of some kind. But I think this thing on her arm, namely these parts, are cloth. So I'm going to give them a texture real quick. It won't take long. Did I draw all of that on the wrong layer? No, I drew it on the correct layer. Hmm. That was weird. Um. Oh, shoot. what just happened but anyway oh no that's definitely the wrong layer okay I need to concentrate there that's correct I guess I'll see what I did wrong in the recording. But whatever, uh, textures are mostly done. I want to make this bow look more like it's made of wood. So I'm going to make another texture. Whoops, I mean to click twice. I'm going to use a lighter color than translucent black because I want it to kind of merge with the color below it. Better. So let's try translucent fifty percent. Yeah, something like this. There we go. Then we'll go back to the subject layer. Right. Wood texture layer. Control I and delete. And that should be good. Okay. Uh, that's it for the textures. Uh, next thing I want to do is I actually want to go in here, select these shines in her eyes, go to the shading layer and hit delete. I want them to be brighter, I don't want them to be shaded. Speaking of which, uh, I should probably apply gradients to her eyes, because the shading didn't do everything I wanted it to. So I'm going to go to the background layer, I'm going to get a darker color for her pupils. darker. That's good. And then for her eyes, I'm going to color pick them twice. Make the first one half, uh, twice as dark. Half as light. I cut the value in half. Then I'm going to select one. Hit the gradient tool, which is G. Uh, it looks like the first color could be darker. Let's make it darker. That's better. Some better contrast. That's much better. Okay, uh, let's see. There's really not much left to do. This went way faster than the last one I did. I guess it's because I was, um, explaining more. And the fact that it was huge, so it lagged a lot. 
Oh, I should apply a wood texture to the arrow as well. Got that taken care of. Uh, now the only thing I can think of that's left is uh, shines. I'm gonna make a layer at the top. Call it shines. Don't give it a special property. Select white. Get the brush tool out and give it a decent size. I'm going to apply shines to her eyes, where the shines are, just to make them glow a bit more. Also, I'm going to shine her lips a bit. Makes them seem kind of glossy. Then I'll put shines on these things up here. I don't know what these are. Some kind of rocks, metal, something. I'm not entirely certain. Tip of the arrow. And all of the gold is going to shine too. And whatever this thing is. Okay, then I'll go in, select each area that I put that stuff on, and give them all a very light blur. Fifteen looks good. Okay, we don't have to delete anything from the background layer for that. We want them to seem shiny. <sighs> okay then. Uh, is there anything else I gotta do before I start <clears throat> putting it on the background and completing the thumbnail? Shoot. Uh, there is one more section of cloth that I forgot about. This one here. Okay, let me take care of it real quick. There, that's that taken care of. Now, if we're absolutely certain that this is done, then I'll go ahead and flatten the layers and save it. For my bigger artwork, I typically save the project too, but these are just, this is just artwork that I throw together real fast. That's the only reason it takes me so little time. Because they're, they're small projects for me, these thumbnails. It's not like I'm getting paid to do them. Not yet, anyway. So, yeah, I think we're good. We should be. If I'm forgetting anything, it's probably really minor. So, here we go. Control Shift F. Flatten all the layers. Now, just to make sure. Yeah, it looks like the only sections of transparency that are being seeped into are from the shines which is what we want. Mm, there is one more thing I could have done. I wanted to make the shines in her hair brighter, but since she has such a dark hair color anyway, I think they look fine the way they are. That's good. Okay, now that the flattened, I can save again without saving it as a project. Okay, now I can close all of these. 
And now it's time to make the thumbnail. Let's make a new image, 1600 by 900. Okay, I need to go get the colors for the Final Fantasy II logo, which are like hot pink and light pink, I think. So, be right back. Okay, I found a vector of the official artwork used for the PSP Remakes logo. It uses the colors I need, so I can just use these. Let's color pick you. Then color pick you with the right mouse button. Go into here, get my gradient tool out, and drag from top to bottom. Yeah, is that taken care of? Okay, then I'll make a new layer for Maria to go into. First thing I want to do is blur this. I'm not going to save the blur. Let's see. Blur it about... Two percent. Two percent should do. And then I'll shrink the height to about a thousand pixels tall. Copy that. Uh, let me move these windows. And paste. Keep canvas size, please. I want Maria's face to be not in the middle, not at the top, but like in the middle, like about a quarter down. So let's move her over away from the left edge a bit. This looks like the perfect spot to put her. Yeah, that looks awesome. Okay, so now we'll make another layer. I don't need to name it. This won't take long. Get blackout. Give me a minute while I go look and see how I made my Final Fantasy 1 thumbnail. Okay, my Final Fantasy 1 thumbnail, I made the text black, given an underline, colored the underline, and gave it a white outline. So I can do the same thing here. I have the Final Fantasy font, so I used to make that one. Let's make this bigger. That should do for now. All caps. Final Fantasy 2. Enable anti aliasing. Make that bigger. This should work. Give it an underline. Actually, no, screw the underline. I'll make the underline myself. Okay, then I'll zoom in, and I'll give it its own underline. Get the rectangle tool out, make this filled. block from here to there. Could probably make that thinner. That looks good. Let me move this whole logo just a bit. Okay, now I'm going to effects, go to object, this is a plugin I have. Outline object with white, let's make it thicker and softer. Like that. 
that looks good. Okay, now I want to make that gradient on this bar here. Let's see, how did I go about doing that before? Alright, let me go to my background layer. Color pick the middle of this. Go up to here. Select this line. Get the gradient tool out. What's my secondary color? I want my secondary color to be black. Get the gradient tool. Set it to this one here, linear reflected. And looks like the shine starts underneath the A in fantasy. So now I click on this and drag it all the way to the end of the line. Is that how it works? Hmm. I should probably have the lighter pink as my primary color, actually. Yeah. Then, I'll select this area, like so, make my secondary color whatever's at the edge here, and then make my primary color white, and then do the same thing. There we go, that looks awesome. And that's it. I'll hit Control Shift F to merge the layers. Ta-da! Final Fantasy II thumbnail is complete. <laughs> that, that is very pretty. I'm really proud of this one. This is probably my best thumbnail yet. I love the way this looks. So yeah, uh, that's all for this video. Uh, the Final Fantasy II Let's Play will probably be starting on Monday. I'm gonna try and upload my Ape Escape Highlights video tomorrow. Yeah, so yeah, uh, thank you all so very much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. I'm just starting this YouTube channel and every like means a lot to me. And if you want to be notified when I upload more videos, namely the start of my Final Fantasy II Let's Play, subscribe to me, and you will. And if you want to be a patron on Patreon, which I have, there'll be a link in the annotations at the end of the video, and in the description below. So, I'll see you all in my next video. And these things know fire too. Great. And they and they lo and they cast it more than once. That's good. Three times. Three times. And Chrome is dead. I love it.